afternoon, good morning, uh, whoever is watching tonight. I have, or today I have a special guest. I have special guests with me because it's a couple, and I am just so excited about what they're going to share with us. They are friends that I've known for a very long time. Uh, I've, I've known one longer than the other, one of the spouses longer than the other, but they're going to come in and they're going to just share their story with us. So I want you to join me. Welcome, Sir and Mrs. Mumford. Welcome uh, this um, afternoon, Blanche and Mike. Thank you for coming on. Would you please just introduce yourself and tell us a little about who you are? Okay, uh, thank you, Pastor Vema, for inviting us. Um, it is a great privilege and to know you do a uh, such kind of job to just meet missionary and let them speak about the, their life to be a blessing for other people. And we say thank you for that. We are so grateful. Thank you for the opportunity to, to share our testimony. Hopefully, hopefully this will be a blessing to whoever listens to this and it'll motivate them to go out and do what God wills for their lives. We are, like you said, we are Mike and this is Blanche. Blanche is a missionary. I am a, I am a licensed minister. I also work for the uh, Department of Defense as a contractor. And we're just glad to be here, and we're here to to let everyone know how Lord has how the Lord has touched our lives. Man, thank you so much. Uh, tell us a little about how long have you been married for? We've been married for five five years. Well, that's awesome! Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, five years is a long time these days. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but let, I want us to go a little, tell us a little about your background, about how you came to know Jesus. How, how did you encounter the Lord? Well, actually, I grew up in the church. My mom and dad, actually, I've learned about, about Jesus mm -hmm. through my mom and dad. My dad was actually a Sunday school teacher at the church at the time. It was written on Church of God. Eventually, okay. he ended up uh, gotten, receiving the call to preach. He was uh, ended up becoming eventually the pastor of the church oh, wow. and I gave my life to Christ when I was 11 years old at that time my great uncle was the church pastor he baptized me in this creek a lot of people get <laughs> baptized in a pool where we got I got baptized in the creek where all the snakes that's the real everything. baptism <laughs> exactly exactly we were looking for the snakes while we were walking toward the the, the water oh, my. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah so that's how I came to, to know Christ and I joined the military when I was, uh, after I left college, when I was in the 20s, in my 20s, and I stayed connected to the church no matter, no matter where I went. I also always stayed connected to the church wherever I went. There's a saying that says you need to grow where you have planted. So that's, you mm -hmm. know, what I tried to do, stay connected wow. to the church. So That's awesome. I, I think at times I get a little jealous of people who, who, grew up in church, kept their faith, have walked with God all of their lives. And I'm like, God, I wish that was my story. But I think it's just amazing. And it's also encouraging for others to know that it's possible, to know that it's possible. You can walk with God all of your life. You don't have to be back and forth. And yeah. Minister Blanche, so tell us. <laughs> oh, me, I have, a, uh, I have a Catholic background. I grew up in Catholic Church. Then in 2020, 2022, this is how uh, a young man in my neighborhood. 22, 2002 or 22 was last year? 2020. 20, 20, 2002. 2002. Oh my God. Sorry. <laughs> oh my Jesus. 2002. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was. Uh, a young man in my neighborhood, uh, well, they was preaching gospel every Sunday. And that Sunday, uh, they meet us just standing with a friend in the neighborhood like this and just speaking like all the funny things with the young people in the neighborhood. And they come and share Jesus with us. Um, the, the, another young man was so mad. And that young people, a friend, well, I was one of my friends, she was like, no, uh, we are so, you know, we're not eating this morning and we are looking to eat. And he come and speak about Jesus. Then it's her told the young man, I give my life to Jesus. And so quick, 
uh, I was not know the guy was in the Bible college, Bible school, for, um, at one school of the ministry. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, after two weeks, the guy invites me to youth program. I don't know, it was somewhere in Cameroon, in Douala, a youth program. I was like, oh my God, that means all these people are Christian. I was thinking I was Christian because I was in Catholic church. I was a uh, uh, give my time and baptize and have high holy communion, but I was not. I was, I was not having a relationship with God. And that day, something's really happened in my life. I gave my life to Jesus. I was like, I don't know how to explain that. Uh, to cut the story, the story short, this is how my journey starts. And the young man, by the grace of God, today is pastor. And this is the one, the, the first person who reached out to Bible school. And this is how in the it was no man of. Oh, uh, it was. Uh, August, June, July, August, right? Ah, uh, yes. Then he reached my Bible school. Then the the September. Then I, I joined Bible school. It was so fast, so fast, so fast. <laughs> oh wow, yeah. that's amazing. I wouldn't, wouldn't. I didn't, I didn't say when you were giving your introduction. You said that Blanche is a Cameroonian. Now she's married to an American. Mike, you're an American. So that's going to be another part of the story. But it's important that <laughs> our audience should know, yeah. and that your first language, Blanche, is French. Yeah, um, my first language yeah. is French. Uh, like, I'm, like a pastor, but I say I'm Cameroonian, and my husband Marco is American. Uh, yeah, so that's a good, that's a good yeah. pattern. Yeah. So people are not like, why is she speaking English like that? Yes, you're doing amazing. <laughs> you're doing an amazing job. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, Blanche, you are a missionary. Can you tell us a little about your call to mission? Yeah, about my call to mission. Um. Like, like I say, it was too, so it was the, the thing was so fast for me because when I give my life to Jesus, the same um, year or months later, I was in, I was in Bible school. I was, first of all, with the youth people, was loving Jesus, have passion for evangelism. Oh my God. There was, I was just for the, the young, I was not know what happened to me, just for the young man was going up and preach. The neighborhood, the university had this, this uh, uh, group, young group together. And this is how I was exposed very early. And I was also follow. You know, more you follow and you become like a, that. <laughs> become like that. Okay. Then I went to Bible school. And when I'm my first year in Bible school, they told us if you don't have a, a cell group, you cannot be graduate. I was not understand much things. But with the young people, I was in the neighborhood who was preaching gospel. Then I say, I'm in Bible school. They told me to have a group. I cannot be graduate. They say, what you see us doing, just do the same thing. Mm -hmm. I said, really? This is how we start to do together. They help me. We evangelize. Then we, we created my own young youth group. But I said that they, they was having their own young uh, youth group already. They was exposed me because to minister like a little present worship, like I came early, pray before the program starts, or come early, then it was uh, some parents who would give us the house. Come early and start to arrange the table, the chair, you know. This is how we started helping on my journey. Then, thank God, uh, also my spiritual parents, all the world was here. It was mission, mission, the passion of God, compassion of soul. I think all, all that just... Uh, uh, Mm, I don't know if I can say it, like I fashion me to be yeah. the person I am. This is how the love of mission, this is how the passion of soul started to grow in my life. Uh, I, I was thinking to be missionary to travel, you know, go somewhere, but they the, the, the let me know where you are if you are Jerusalem, where you are, this is your own mission field. If you cannot love people, right there you are. It's not where you, are, you, are, you, want, you, you go out. And this is how I started to love that mission. Go out to preach in the market, in the prison, everywhere. It was given an opportunity. Uh, we just preach gospel most of all in the school, you know, uh, in, in my country in Cameroon, we had that privilege to preach. And the, when the, the, the students get out in the school, and we have privilege to preach to them. This is how we created some different groups, some group of dance, drama, you know, different things. These are the passion of mission. And I do yes. mission by Bible school, and I, I do also mission school. Mm -hmm. uh, mission school also helped me to understand more about mission different for different part of the the country because you know you have different tradition different culture but... yeah thank you so much for sharing i think that there's something that is and I, i'm not saying that those who are, are born and grow up because your husband has so much passion for missions and all of that and for souls 
that I feel like there's something about people when they get saved at a certain time. Well, it also depends on the context. There is a passion. It's almost like you want to just give God your all. And that's why when I hear you talk, I think that is it. Like when you got saved, it was like you were in 100%. It wasn't yeah. one leg in and one leg out. It was mm. at 100%. And you said something also that I think it's important for people to know is so people ask, oh, how do I know that I'm called to missions? Just serve where you are. You were just being faithful to serve. You were reaching out mm. to the lost. Mm. And because it's in the service where God himself ignites, put that in the inside of you. And but if you just sit and say, okay, I'm going to pray to know if I'm called to missions. God, what are you doing now? So if it's being faithful where you are, where God has planted you. So thank you so Pastor, much. Pastor, I want to thank God. Uh, you know, that also the, 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 these two young people lead me in Christ. They was really so committed. I think it's the it was they was really so committed because they was praying every Wednesday in my neighborhood, our neighborhood, because we live in we don't know each other, but it was living. And they were so faithful to pray every Wednesday for the salvation of the young people in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And through that prayer, this is how they get me in evangelism. And they say, you know what? We are praying any Wednesday for the young people. Join us and we pray together. This is how we are joined them. I was not know how to pray. We're just repeating the all, all, also prayer because I'm not just to pray all the Catholic prayer. And more they was praying, I would just take a word for this one. I pray, I pray. This time I was, you know, I learned how to pray. And mm -hmm. we went out on Saturday after Bible class. We went out, we preached in the neighborhood, and on Wednesday we go and pray for the neighborhood. I think this is all oh, this helped me a lot. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much. So uh let's switch gear a little. You both met in Dubai when you were on the mission field and your husband. So tell us what took you there and a little of that story. Um yeah, I went in Dubai. I was mish uh, like I say, uh after that, I was graduating Bible school, Bible school. After I did the school of mission, I was working in Cameroon full time in the ministry. And this, uh, I, I went to the, the the east of the country uh, for mission for one year, like one year, six months when I raised, I raised youth people, Bible camp and everything. Then uh, the, my leadership asked me to return back in, in, the, in the base with a Douala in Cameroon. And then after that, I was working in always in full time. Then I went to Middle East with Dubai, like a missionary. Then when I went Middle East, Muslim country. The first time I want to go to the north in Cameroon. I was expected to like have like a, some short mission trip to go and see how Muslim live, how they do. And I just right in the Middle East with Muslim. And we're not supposed to preach Jesus out. It was, it was so difficult. But God is God, because when I went there, I was I don't, oh God, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to start. They say it's not allowed to do this. A lot of law, a lot of law. But God gave me the strategy. My sister, who was my cousin, was there, was her, her friends. Though mm -hmm. Through that friend, this is how I tried to preach gospel to that people. That I have my first cell group for youth people. It was in, late in the night. 10 o'clock, it was 11 o'clock because the time it was available. 11, 11 to midnight. <laughs> to midnight. Oh, wow. And this time we, we have that group of one year, faithfully 11. Because in, in Dubai, we work, most people work in the night. They work very late until 10. You know, in the 10, they're supposed not to come back home, start to cook food, start to eat, sometimes you're really one o'clock in the morning. And this is how I was preach gospel to those um these young people and have my 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 group. I was minister every day, preach to the street, preach for some public area where it's not a lot, but I was a God, at least we call me, I need to do something here, put preach to Muslim. Some people say, Oh no, thank you. But I thank God for one Muslim who told me, you know, speak to my kids, you know, because I don't, I don't want them to go out. He speak to them and it gave me that permission to speak to the kids. There was twins mm -hmm. and they gave the letter to Jesus. And when I came, they were we become friends. They were not to accept Jesus, but they was pay attention. I was I was for me, for me, it was a victory. So, oh my God, if you never like, pay attention and the daddy allowed me, that means I'm super yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, it was so good. It was so good. I, I think this is how um I met Michael. 
Yeah, I think this is how I met Marco. After, I think after three years, I was working in the mission field, preaching gospel. I was so full-time preaching gospel, make disciples, then I saved the church, like an usher, praise and worship, and they say so early in the morning, like I went to church at like 7 o'clock, right? Yeah. I had to be like so early. I was lived very far, one hour for bus. And to oh, be wow. up early in the morning, come and pray before the, the, the church starts and to arrange everything. This is how uh, I met Michael because one day he came to the church, the first time I was thinking it's police because they always warned me, you know, you preach gospel, it's not allowed. Mm -hmm. You preach gospel, it's not allowed. <laughs> then the one I said, I said, oh my God, I don't know this man. I don't know. Maybe today <laughs> is the day. <laughs> but then you're going <laughs> to be arrested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is how. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was, I was in, uh, I was in UAE because I was working as a contractor for the UAE military, and I found the church. Church is Abu Dhabi Fit Assembly of God. I actually found it on online before I left because I'm a member of the Assembly of God. I'm affiliated mm -hmm. with the Assembly of God, so I was trying to find the church. Before I went overseas, I didn't know anything about UAE, and I was surprised because, like I said, it's a Muslim country. But yeah, there's a church there, Assembly of God, and the first person I saw when I got to the church was Blanche. She was an usher Ooh! there. <laughs> <laughs> she was an usher there. Now I wasn't was like that, but anyway, it was an usher there, and um, she, you know, greeted me and told me where to sit, and then. Uh, that's how I uh, actually how we met. We met through the church. We ended up being the same style group, and then she would invite me to prayer to pray with her. We pray. Uh, just a brave lady, so she would pray out in the park in public and invite me to pray with her. And while she's praying, this is I'm honest. While she's sitting there praying hard, I'm looking around to see if somebody's coming or anybody's watching us because I was I'm, 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 I'm being honest I was a little scared we're in a Muslim country but, yeah uh, I, she's really brave and we <laughs> we made it serving the military so you know a lot more what can happen yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah oh my so, so tell me I think I'm excited I want to so how did the transition from me about how inviting you to just come and pray and transition to like, hey, I think there is something here. How did that I, relationship I transition from? We well, as we got to know each other and we came, became friends, but then I realized that this she was she had a. I actually think I told her she had like you had a good heart, you have a really great heart, and so I saw that heart. And I saw that she loved the Lord, and and then um, I actually prayed and prayed. I prayed a long time about it because you know I had been in other relationships and stuff. So I prayed a long time and just forgot if this is I'm having these feelings about this lady. If if this is what you want me to do, just let me know. Just you know, let me know because I'm starting to have feelings about this lady. <laughs> and, you know, I think one day. I actually told her, and honestly, I'm telling you, it's okay. We sat and cried, cried for, I don't know, a couple of hours <laughs> after, yeah, because we were like, I was scared, she was scared, but that's, yeah, that's what happened. And I think she can tell, say some more about that. <laughs> okay, man, she your turn. Your, your side of the story. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, like I, um, like I, Michael said, um, like I went meet in the church, I was ushering, and and we realized when we finished the ch church, it was alone because it was the first time it was alone. Then I had the little, I have the my like my one of my spiritual daughter. I said, I don't see the name of this young this man of our newcomer members. We don't know how to mm -hmm. follow up. Say, ah, we don't even give you the brochure to fill up. I said, okay, let me just go. I don't know if it's police, but if you not see me, let me just know. Is the one who arrested me because I have one. You see, if you preach again, they will put me in jail mm. or they will deport me. Let me just go. And when I go, then I speak. I say, Sir, good, my wife come. This is your first time. I say, Yes, okay, please. Uh, what's your name? And I did give your name. I say, My name is Blanche. And I say, Okay, 
Do you mind if you will have your contact number and your name, then we follow up with you because they feel like you are new. You say, yes, I just, I learned yesterday. I, I don't know if it's a yesterday, yes, an American. I say, oh, you're welcome. He say, yes. Then, to go to the story thought, I invited you to the Hawaii youth, Hawaii group, our cell group. We have every Sunday, we have group, we pray, we, I, I was teaching that group. I was teaching that group every Sunday. I did not know how to find a way to come there. Then I said, okay, I, I buy the bus ticket. I said, take your bus ticket. This is how you work. This is how you work. Like, <laughs> you know, no, no one. Then I said to inviting me. I don't know. I think he shared something with me. No, I feel my heart. Okay, God put something in my heart and I shared with him. It was personal thing within he and the family. And he not say yes or no. But he said, I said, I have, I'm taking prayer and fasting. If you want, I'm taking straight, not yeah. drinking water, not eating. If you want, join me in that prayer and then we will we, we pray with you. We pray together. Yeah. He said, yeah. yes, but I cannot take it long. I said, no problem. Like, you can't just take it. And he was come to the park and we pray together. And he was so scared. I said, brother, hey, <laughs> pray. He, you know what? You're American. Me, I'm from Cameroon. If it's police catch me here, they will send me back home. You, they catch you say, ah, American, they will leave you. You pray. Ah. <laughs> He was like, okay, okay. He was, he was very scared. And this is how we had to pray together and house group and we have opportunity to teach in the house group. And he, was, he told me he wanted to join the usher. I said, okay, yes. And he joined usher. Then he was so early person. This is didn't mark me with Mark. He was so very early. I used to be early, but he was so early. He came early. And the church. I would get there before the doors are open. Everything <laughs> open. Oh, wow. You clean everything. You arrange everything. I said, wow. This is how we start to pray in intercession prayer program together with another team. We pray. And the day he said something happened to your heart. I was so very mad because I said, how this brother can see something like that? You're not supposed to think. This is people. Somebody trusts you because I'm praying with you. Not, okay. Then I stop the relationship. I said, I don't speak to you anymore. When it come this way, I go that way. I say, no, 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 stop that. And it was very a bad so too. I don't know my spirit and myself and he don't even suck her. And he was so mad. He was so he feel very bad. Because he was I was the only person he was very close and relate to. And I don't speak to you anymore. <laughs> when he needs something, don't know how to find it. Because he was to call me, if I need something, I want to go where. I I, I call me and not pick the call. It was so difficult, but now I'm here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, I think I just I really love uh you both story because like you were not you were not seeking marriage you were just being faithful no, to Jesus uh, mm -mm. you were just serving the Lord you were just being faithful to Him just doing what you know God had called you to do and somewhere in the middle of it God surprised yeah God surprised you both. So what would you say to a young person or even an adult that God is calling to the mission field but they are really hesitant or they are afraid because they are like, man, if I leave my country, maybe I won't find anybody else. Maybe they are supposed to go to a place where they don't think that they might find somebody there, but they are really hesitant because like, will I ever get married if I say yes to God? I what would you tell them? Yeah, I think I would say yes. <laughs> that I, I, I think I need to tell to all the young people or the Anyone who think if your goal is not possible to me to have this or this or yes, I think this is a very wrong, very wrong. It's a it, God have the timing of everything. Hmm. God have the timing of everything. You just obey and go. Sometimes the thing we hold to just to be in one place limit God to move in our life. Yeah, you know sometimes yeah. we live. So, 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 some different things you cannot able to achieve if you are still in one place. Mm -hmm. I, I was not imagined I can be in Muslim country, like a single woman, stay alone and preach gospel and travel for all the different nations. I go around a Muslim country and speak about Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, if you stay in one place, you cannot see what God can do on you or through you. He yeah, wants yeah. just you to take a, the, the step of faith to move all mm -hmm. this thing you need to, all these marriages, all this what a good life is somewhere in the mission field. I can, I can Amen. It's Amen. So when you just obey and you say, God, I don't care what's happened. Let me just go. Give me just mm -hmm. that faith to go on your name. 
And whatever we leave in the bag, God will, re will just make everything be possible to you. Amen. Amen. And in, in the Bible, it says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Mm. First and foremost, says we should want to do the will of God, no matter what it is. Yeah. I didn't expect to, I went to UAE just to work. I didn't expect to come back. Well, actually, I didn't come back with a spouse, but I came back engaged. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I was just there to work and, the, you know, like I said before, I always stay connected to the church and served him. And mm -hmm. actually, the, even that experience over there, I just grew closer to the Lord. And, and Blanche actually helped me with that. She was actually like my spiritual leader while I was <laughs> over there. I called her my pastor. <laughs> 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 So I would, you know, if I'm not a missionary, but I, I, you know, I was single. So I know that we all want, you know, to get married sometime, someday, but mm -hmm. the first and foremost is to do the will of the Lord. And some people yeah. get married, some people won't, but the, if we, if we are, live outside of God wills, it won't be the best for us. It might yeah. be good for us. It could even be bad for us. Yes. Like we within the God's will, it'll be the best for us. Yeah. Mm. So that's the most important thing. Yeah. That's that's really awesome. I think I like the verse that you delight yourself in the Lord and you will grant your heart's desire. At times we are looking for the heart's desire and it's running away from us because we are not delighting in the Lord. And God is like, just put me first and I'm going to order your steps in that. Yeah. yeah so thanks. Thank, thank you guys for sharing that. Uh, one thing I know about you both is your passion for souls, your passion to make disciples. Why is that important? It's like for people who live in America, at times people will be like, oh, you're in America, your life has arrived. Why are you worrying again about all the... So why is that really important? Uh, we, uh, yes. Oh, sorry. I speak French and English at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very so important. This is what we live for. This is what, I don't know if I can explain that. This is a, our, the heartbeat of God. They, mm -hmm. they become our first assignment. They become our first desire. This is what matter. Nothing else no matter. This passion, I think, I think, if we, if we, we keep the vision pure, we keep the vision pure, we know what God called us to do. Another thing is secondary. It comes like a second thing. This for mm -hmm. me, the pattern of soul or pattern for God and compliance for soul is the first thing no matter. Not like I will say to ourselves, first of all, our, our relationship with God, then the pattern of soul, nothing, self ourself, self myself, or Michael self, nothing, not come, like I put something else on it. We are so jealous for that, for that because we know this is what will matter for God. And we live for that. We live to see this thing accomplished. This is what God also keep us until now. I think for me, we know if we are still alive until today because God wants to achieve something to Amen. me. It's what we keep growing. Amen. And nothing, no matter, nothing, no money, no husband, no wife, nothing cannot take that place. Thank God for husband. It's so beautifully sweet. But <laughs> the pattern of soul and the love of God, we put the purity of everything, our communion with God mm. and the pattern of soul. And I think this is what guides us. Mm. Sometimes when we want to do, we say, hey, hey, don't forget, let us come together and know this is what matters. Yeah. yeah. And thank God also for our spiritual father because this is the, 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 the word we hear always. Always, it's a good to have leader. Yeah, yes. speak over your life is very matter. This is why when I was growing up spiritually until now, this is what I hear always. My spiritual father and moms always say, "The kingdom yeah. of God. the it's kingdom, God. yes, the kingdom of God." I think. Yeah. <laughs> I would. Mr. Mike, do you have something to add? Yeah, I would say. This this is what we're commanded to do. This is what Jesus mm -hmm. told us to do when he when he left. He yeah. said, and make disciples of all nations. Mm -hmm. And I want to say that um, my wife has helped me in, in this as well because 
before I was a little hesitant about cheering and witnessing to the to people to get them to know Christ. Mm -hmm. But now it's like I have a it's it's like my heart is on fire to Amen. people to know him and it, it breaks my hearts when we witness and people just reject, mm -hmm. reject the word and they're not rejecting us they're rejecting him they're rejecting yeah. mm -hmm. so and our church has a evangelism team which is we actually our church was actually featured in our the assembly of god magazine because of our evangelism program we go out every saturday in fact like when you came Yep. Visit, you went out with us and mm -hmm. when I first went this was before Blanche came to the U.S. but I just went to see I went there just out of curiosity, <laughs> out of curiosity. so let me see what this thing is about and then um, we would go out and then when we first were going out I was just like okay I hope I don't be I don't get asked to pray that witness I just want to observe but it, it was like I had they pushed me right into the fire it's like hey you go ahead your turn <laughs> and I, I would say I was so nervous and that's I think that's what a lot of people will not don't want to witness they want that they, they don't because of the fear they yeah. fear, they, their fear of being rejected or their fear of, I don't know what to say or mm. you know different things and well after doing it for so long it's just like anything you get familiar with it you get used to it it's you can do it it's like second nature. Hmm. Yeah. And, and then you can be actually useful. You're useful when you first start, but you're even more useful the more you do it. The more yeah. the more you do it, the more you can do it, I guess you can say. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah. and that's why I do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that's just really incredible because uh it's not a common, it's not a common thing. I'm a pastor and I can tell it's not a common thing, even in settings, like in my setting or in settings where, uh, well, many settings that I'm familiar with, it's not a common thing. Most often when we say our evangelism, it's a program that we are doing. It's mm -hmm. maybe, uh, and that is part of outreach, maybe a generosity thing where people come and then when they come that we can um, preach to them or we are doing this, mm -hmm. gener whatever, still watching what we are giving things to people. So most often it's that we're just intentionally seeing people out and like say hey i'm going to talk to you about i'm not just going to tell you a story i'm going to i'm not just going to invite you to my church i'm going to talk to you about jesus mm -hmm. and see you give your life to christ and then i can invite you uh exactly. if you come good if you don't come good but you've had an opportunity to hear the good mm -hmm. news i think that's just incredible and outstanding and i'm really excited that you both um you do that well not just you but your entire your church is really active in doing that uh, so I want you both have gone through some really tough, 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 tough life challenges in your five years of being married. And you are standing, like you are standing, not just you're not standing, you're thriving, you're fulfilling purpose, you're flourishing, and you're an example to many. What would you tell someone who's going through a difficult season in their marriage? And they're like, God, can I take it anymore? At the verge of giving up, how would you encourage them? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I had to get permission to talk about this, but I wanted to yeah. make sure. But uh, two months, no. Yeah. Two months after we were married, um, Blanche was diagnosed with breast cancer, stage 3B. And at that time, the honeymoon was over and it was time to get serious. And during that time, actually, we, what I would say, when you go through those difficult situations, actually my my faith actually grew through mm -hmm. that, that whole uh, trial during that whole time. My faith actually grew. I, I prayed more, I worshiped more, I was in the word more. I, I prayed uh, our relationship to, together with each other. It grew, uh, it really grew a lot. And um, actually, it may, actually helped bond our, make our marriage, I guess, bond our relationship because we went through a difficult time. And mm -hmm. I would just say, don't give up. Draw close to God. Stay near God mm -hmm. and, and support each other. 
And yeah. I wasn't the person that was actually going through the health um, situation, but I was there to support her. And I, and whenever she needed, I don't care what it was, I was there for her. And actually, I don't want to say COVID, even though it was uh, a rough time, it actually was during that time I was blessed to stay home mm -hmm. so I could be with her and help her when, when she was going through this whole uh, trial. And yeah. I just say, stay close to God, stay in the word and, and continue to praise God through the storm. Praise him through the storm. Amen. Like that song from the uh, Casting Crowns, I'll praise you through the storm. Praise yeah. Uh, Blanche, before you go, I really want to salute you, Mike, because I would say I know you both close enough and uh, maybe from a distance to watch how you went through and I salute you. It's not, it's not a, it's not, Many people crush in the middle of that, but to see your faith, to see your commitment, to see your loyalty, I celebrate that and I pray that there are many other godly men that God will raise like that who can support. You are a true, a true, true blessing. I bet she can, she can say that too. <laughs> yeah, it's my blessing. <laughs> 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 wow, that, that situation, like my, my husband will say, it was really like a surprise, like a boom. And they just call us, you know, hey, um, uh, we do the test like this. You have cancer. I was online, you know, they call. And and the week before, um, Donald McCulloch was having some program here in the town. I said, oh my God, I want to go to that uh, cancer. I want to see Donald McCulloch because we just here in the, maybe in the, before it was a city, something like that. And we buy the ticket and we, that day, the day for the program, they called us to have cancer. And Michael become like, like a red, you know, he was kind of like a... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I said, no matter, no, no here. We go to, he said, are you sure? I said, let me go and praise Jesus. And, and we went there. To be honest, I don't know if it was, it was again me. It was act like that. I don't know. May I know one thing? We went there and I dance, mm -hmm. and dance, okay. and I dance, and I sweat. And when we finish, we came back. I said, "Nah." What did they say again? They said, "Have cancer." <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> but God, through the challenge, God really um sustained us. It was very difficult moment for so for Michael because I said we not take to no one. We know it's for the member of our family because we know they will so pity. Oh, what happened? Oh, I, I don't want to hear that. I want somebody who just like a God is faithful, God is there with you. You know, I want somebody who will give me the word, the word of hope and faith. It was so difficult yeah. for us and more for Michael because it was like a, a let me tell to my mom, let me tell to my sister. I said, No, no tell to no one. And sometimes when you want to cry, I said, you know what? Go out, cry, then come back. Because I'm the one who have the problem. If I see your chest, I will die. <laughs> it was so difficult with the chemotherapy and surgery and everything. But through that process, God really changed my heart, my faith, mm -hmm. my, my, yeah. my, 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 the way I speak, the way I see things really change, really change. And I was, I was pray for myself. I will speak to myself. Sometimes I used to write a little uh, note like this. I put all in the um, everywhere yes. in the house. Then when I, I I see, I just declare that word. I say, God, you are the one who say it. Then I have uh, some YouTube, some preacher will be about healing. I confess the word. And this particular time is so important. Why? You know, when something is difficult, sometimes we give up. Sometimes we are so very weak. And this is why we become more vulnerable to the devil. He yeah. attack our thought. Cancer is something not easy. He attack your thought. I will see myself in the grave every day, in the tomb every day. But this is why you need to have leader over your life. Mm -hmm. You need to have some close, let me say again, some close relation, covenant relationship. Because mm -hmm. it's not everything you speak to extend to everyone. You can be brother and sister in the church. Thank God. We need to have some close person they will share with them. They will stand with you to the prayer. They will stand the gap. They will cry with you. They will, you know, they will speak with you. 
And this work, uh, uh, leadership is so important that I told that God was so faithful with us. And, and before I finished my, because I was five months chemotherapy, before I finished the, I think it was a three months, I don't know, three months or four months, I don't even know something like that, but I was still in chemo. Yes. And they, they called us, say, please come quick. Yeah, God is true because I was always confessed the word of faith. Mm. As I cannot die, God, I need to preach gospel. I always speak to my daughters, God is good, I'm healed. When you want to, she want to say, take this. I say, yes, but I know what God healed me already. Say, yeah, you're too so I say, maybe you think I'm, I'm so <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. God yeah. healed me. Um, thank God, God gave me some different vision. I stand that vision I have. Yeah. I stand on it. I say, God, if you say it, you will do it. Then I will always confess what I see to that vision. I was always confess. And before the chemo end, I was already declared cancer free. I continued okay. to say, I was declared cancer free. It was so difficult. But like Michael say, our faith, all of us, change. The way we speak, okay. the way we see things, the way we, you know, now today I become pastor in the hospital. I pray for people. You know, I have different approach. Mm. Different approach, different, uh, I, I relate with the people differently. Mm -hmm. I think God was trying not only to heal me that cancer, but it was, it was, it was there was something in my heart to make something grow. Amen. My faith grow, yes, something more, grow more, like my faith growing more, my turn to be renewed, the way I see, see things. God was working all that. It's the end, you can just know that, but when it's the process, sometimes it's not easy. <laughs> it's wow. Not easy. And I, was, I was just wanting to add that in the middle of the darkness, you can actually be the light. Like that's, like if you go into a chemo ward, it's like one of the darkest places. But Blanche was like witnessing while mm. she was even going mm. through the mm. chemo. She was there mm. witnessing and praying for people yeah, and, and things like that. So we can even, and maybe that's, you know, why she went through the trial mm. and to help others that are going through similar situations. That's what the, any dark place in our lives we we go through certain things and mm -hmm. we have others that go through the same similar situations yeah yeah okay. yeah i forget that part it was, it was so amazing it was, mm -hmm. you know in our room it was covid you cannot allow to go out to meet people and we went to sit in one place for hour sometimes chemotherapy is sometimes in the first time it was like a five six hour yeah be there all yeah for two months every week it's a six hour you need to be there you want you know what you need to be there and that particular time with that chemo and everything i was ministered to people preach yeah. gospel praying for them myself i was in chemo i was praying for them you know sometimes when you face situation and you think oh it's just over no god mm. will use that if you still you are so uh sensitive God could you, you use that moment to you to have to to to, to minister to people. Not say you, you you give up because I have pain. God mm. will use that moment of pain to you to be a witness to another person. Mm -hmm. Don't throw that. Yeah. I minister people. A lot of people give their love. The first month I was there, a lot of people give their love to Jesus. And mm. today I become friends with a, a lot of people. All the nurses I preach to them. All the doctors I preach to them. Then uh, when some another you know, testimony, when somebody have when in Africa come like in some part of Africa, more in Cameroon, mm -hmm. they used to call me. The hospital called me to say, well, please, we have somebody who have cancer. She she's uh, from uh, your country of one part of Africa. Please, we think your experience can help the person mm. to go through this. And this had through that, I bring Jesus. I pray for the family and then to lead me to the own family and sometimes become the little pastor of the family. Now, this is how God can do things, you know, through your situation and the open doors. That's, that's incredible. As you both are talking, I'm thinking of two scriptures keep coming to my mind. Uh, Job says, even though you slay me yet, I will trust you. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's, that's what true Christianity is about. It's not only when everything is good. It's that even when we go through the darkest part, we are thank God, mm -hmm. I still trust you. You are God, you are faithful. And then... Apostle Paul said that I might know him, the power of his resurrection and the mm. fellowship of mm. his suffering. And mm. um, I'm seeing it's in that suffering where God has revealed himself in the way yeah. that compassion in your heart and just, mm. man, you, you amaze me. You amaze <laughs> me by your Thank passion you. for Jesus and how you live that out in incredible ways.
Okay, thank you guys for sharing so much. Uh, people, I think, Pastor, Pastor Velma, I think also I want to say something about that. Mm -hmm. You know, when sometimes we think everything is okay, okay, I don't have this problem, I don't have that problem. Sometimes our relationship with God is uh, like a um, ups and down. We're not too faithful because we say everything is okay. Very distant. Very distant. It's when everything is okay, you need to go more deep with God. Yeah. It's why everything is so going to find God like I never before. Mm. Praise him, worship him, study Bible, go deep in your relationship. Because when the trial comes, you don't have that power to go deep. It's yeah. that moment. That moment you be for so many years, or for so many weeks, for so many months, who, who permit to, you, you stand on it. Mm -hmm. God, if you say you not pray for, for two minutes, for one, for five minutes, you say, God, I know, then I know. Yeah. And I know because one day at that program, because you go deep and you and you see God for different level in that moment of right. like I said, everything is okay. Mm -hmm. You see God. And when problem come, if you don't have enough one to pray, that moment, that thing you, you cultivate in the intimacy will build your faith. Because yeah. when problem comes, sometimes we don't have we're not close to God while everything is okay. When trial comes, we'll be like a fire fighter. Oh, God, come. Jesus, help me. Sustain <laughs> me. In that time, we need, because we need maybe some breakthrough. Mm -hmm. No, sometimes it's not, sometimes it's not right. good. Because yeah. we need breakthrough, and we call God to all the name. But we don't have that <laughs> truth. We don't have that in the intimacy. We don't have that. Mm -hmm. It's very yeah. important, yeah. So God is almost like a magic magician. We just go to him for yeah. to get. Yeah, exactly. It's yes, not yes. a relationship. A genie. Another, another yeah, it's a genie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, thank you both. Please, um, guys, if you're watching and if this is inspiring you, if it's encouraging you, share it, like, subscribe to this channel. But share this story with someone. I know there is somebody who needs to hear this. So share this with someone. Uh, okay, you both are in your second marriages. And I know I'm a, that maybe probably because I'm a pastor, as I relate to people, it's there are times it's just so heartbreaking to see how people go into depression. And it's like, they're just like, why should I leave again? I'm actually talking with someone now that I've been like, they're like, what is the essence? Why should I leave? Why is my life worth anything? Maybe because of a divorce, some because of the loss of a spouse. What would you tell them? How can you encourage them to let them know that there is still hope? It's funny that you brought up Joe because when you asked this question, I think about that because when I went through what I went through, one book I, in the Bible I turned to was Job, and I read, and it was like a testimony to me, like, hey, oh, wow. he lost everything. He Even his health was bad, but he stayed faithful. People were even accusing him, but he stayed faithful to God, and he would restore it with twice as much as what he had, and that's what okay. kept me kept me going. And as before, I didn't go, I didn't wasn't looking to get married again or anything like that but it happened and the the lord blessed me to have a just a wonderful wife and i do call her my blessing <laughs> and uh, so the what i say is just don't let whatever happens to you affect your relationship with god and stay mm. faithful to him and trust him through all the whatever you're going through and right. uh and his, let his will be done, whatever it may be. Maybe you'll get married, married. Maybe you won't, but just mm -hmm. uh, trust him and stay, stay close to him. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing, Minister Blanche. Do you have something? Yeah, I can just add what uh, Michael say. Um, sometimes the trial is so difficult. It's so, it's so, it's so difficult when uh we we, we lost one member of the family, somebody close. Or you divorce with somebody you loved before, and the thing just uh, scatter like that sometimes. But I want to let us know there is always a hope with Jesus. Amen. Always, to, to be honest, always. Like Amaka was saying, when I'm going through what I'm going through, I was still in the ministry full time. Those who know me, I not stop because. <laughs> 
Yeah. Those who know me, I was sometimes having tears by preaching gospel. Mm. Yes, with the tears, I was preaching gospel. For those who, I, I want people to listen to this uh, video. I was teaching in the uh, a Douala. They call uh, some part of Douala. I was uh, having, like, I organized some quasit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I was plan have planification with people, with the young people. How we organize, I was crying. My own problem, my own situation. But when I finished crying, I said, God, let me first preach. <laughs> yeah. Then I went and preach. Then I went and we, we did miracles. We finish, we pray for the young people. We organize everything. Then when I go back home, oh, no, I was not having any house. Thank God my sister was hosting me for a time. Then I will enter house, I will cry. But early in the morning, I'm in the ministry. Like it depends on how everyone handles situation. I was not mm. so strong. No. It was it depends how everyone handles situation. But not allowed. Yeah. Let me repeat myself. No allow not anything. Take the joy of God on your life. No allow Amen. everything move, uh, move you out of the plan of God. Mm -hmm. You love the person, you married, and one day the marriage is no more. You still have life to live. Mm -hmm. You still have purpose to accomplish. It's all about God, He who call you. Amen. Sometimes finish crying and stand up. No give up because somebody leave you. Thank God for you. Thank God for the good thing, for the good life. Believe for you. One day, one pastor told me, I not face this blanche. I don't know how to advise you. I know which, which word I can give to you. May choose to live for you. Mm -hmm. Make good to yourself. Live for you. Make I don't know how I can say it in English. Make good. <laughs> Say, Take fait pas, du, fait pas du bien. Yeah, do good to yourself. Yes. Be kind, be kind to yourself. Yes. Fait toi du bien. Do good to yourself. You want to kill yourself? You want to abandon everything? Depress? The person only go and you move forward. And you are, you are killing yourself. You kill yourself, you don't come back. You don't kill yourself. Do good to yourself. And this is how I say, ah, God, I can do good, good to myself. Let me just go. The only thing I know how to know is to preach. Let me just preach gospel. Now I will spend my time to do good to myself and preaching gospel. What do you know to do? What do you, what do you want to do? What, what do you know to do? What do you want to do? Do it to please yourself and please God. If it's gospel, preach. If you know how to cheat, cheat. If you know how to have two children and, uh, around you and tell them the word of God, do it. Spend the time to do something. If you stay alone, the devil will kill you. And can I, I wanted to add to yeah. is when I was going through this trial, um, my uncle was a pastor. So I was just, I called him for counsel and I asked him how to deal with it. And he just said, stay in the word <laughs> stay on your knees, and stay on your knees. Mm. And I took it to heart. So I was praying a lot and I was <laughs> in the, I actually Googled read the Bible through in one year. So I started and I would read the, I would just read the word every day and I was yes. praying a lot. And then also I was listening to a lot of uh, gospel music mm -hmm. and I exercise. So I know myself personally exercise. If I go for a walk, it helps relieve whatever mm -hmm. stress I have. Yes. Whatever. So I would walk and listen to, to inspirational music and mm -hmm. And, and actually draw closer to God. And then at church, when they had altar call, I said, I didn't, I used to be like embarrassed to go to the altar to pray, mm -hmm. but I said, I don't care anybody see me, what they see me doing. I don't care. They see me crying. Yeah. I need the Lord. I'm going to the altar. Every time there's an opportunity, I'm going to be there. Yes. That's so good. <laughs> Oh man, man. That is so good. That is so good. Uh, I've not, I've not maybe at our, I think we, we don't go through the same things in life, but as children of God, there's, we are not going to be exempt from challenges. Exactly. And I think I understand like what Blanche says, you are crying and then you have to wipe your tears and then still go preach. And, and you have to be okay because you have, it's almost like there are times when God calls us to ministry, we are the, there are seasons where we are wounded healers. We are bringing healing and wholeness mm -hmm. to people even when we are wounded.
And at times, it's not even only in ministry, even in life. Mm. Because God is like saying your purpose is bigger. There is much more about you. Yes, maybe this relationship ended or maybe this person is no more. But God is like, you, it's just you. I have a plan for you. I have a purpose for you. And it is a good one. If you would trust me, things can turn around. And uh, yeah, thank you all for sharing that. So guys, if you're going through a difficult season and you're just about to give up, let I want to let you know that, come on, there is hope. God has a plan that is bigger. If you would turn your eyes from the trouble, from the challenges, put your eyes on Jesus, get back to the word, get back yes. to the presence of God yes. and start, start looking into yourself like, why am I on this earth? And start seeing the bigger mm -hmm. purpose that you can fulfill. Yes, you'll be amazed that a few years down the road, you'll be like, oh man, looks like this thing turned out for my good. God walked yeah, it exactly. out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for exactly. my good. And yeah. Yeah, so thank you both so much. So now let's talk, let's get some marriage counseling, some wisdom. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm single and we have many singles who come and watch this channel. And there are probably some people who are like, oh man, I'm looking for, what do I look for in a spouse? Maybe in a man or a woman. Which wisdom would you give them when they are looking for a spouse and they are wanting to like know who is, what to consider if, to know if this is the right person or not? What should they look for? The first and foremost, I think is, Make sure that your relationship with God is right. You have a relationship with him and seek him and for, for that. And, you know, Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all this will be added to you. That's yeah. to me, that's more than just what he was talking about. Life, food, clothing, yeah. what, whatever. But so seek God, seek, have a relationship with God and if you have a good relationship with God, God will bring that person into your into your life. Amen. And another uh, advice I like I would like to give is be patient. Mm. First, if, the first person that crosses your path may not be the right right person. And I've heard a saying that sometimes people come into our lives for a season. Some people are in our lives for here for a lifetime. They may yeah. be in your life for a season, maybe for you to learn something from them or to mm -hmm. for you to learn something about yourself from them or to, to, to teach you something or something like that. But they might not be that particular person for that God has for you. And, um, I also just want to say, just make sure that you keep yourself pure. Mm -hmm. Keep yourself pure and be yes. patient. Be patient and ask God for discernment because even people that go to church that are church <laughs> or say they're Christians, uh, they some of them go for ulterior motives. Some of yeah. them go for ulterior motives. They, some of them, they're to meet to meet uh, someone of the opposite sex. They're not really there to to get close to God and connect with God. Mm -hmm. So that's God for discernment and, and have wisdom and patience. And that the Lord, if, that, if that's what the Lord intends you to have, that person, that person, that Lord will bring that person into your life. It won't, you don't mm -hmm. even know where it's going to happen. Because mine came when I was like overseas, working a job overseas, and uh, yeah, not even expected. Kid. Yes, exactly, <laughs> mm -hmm. exactly. Yes. Yeah, I thank you, um, Blanche. Before you coming out, I think I like what you said. People come to church. Not everybody in church yes. is is that's it's not only because somebody is in church means they're right right person. Because not every sometimes not even everybody in church is born again. But I would say not everybody in pulpit is yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. because right. so discernment yeah. i think it's like a really big one to be able to discern and yeah okay like michael say i think um what i can tell he said the same thing um say the same thing first of all know who you are and know your relationship with god mm -hmm. when you know your relationship with god and know know who you are and when god's how god is leading you you know if you say somebody come in front of you, it cannot shake you. It cannot move you because you know, you're not looking for that. You don't run after those things. 
because today the church we run after different things and when mm -hmm. we run after that the devil makes sure to just show us that this is the thing you're looking for and just move on to your life with god what is the purpose of god upon your life and stand on that in the mm -hmm. right time god will send the right person sometimes can be the person at the right time sometimes it's not the person sometimes it's the person but it's not the right time and like michael was saying to have discernment is very matter it's not because mm -hmm. everybody is this time everybody go to the left you need to follow that left stand to your own your own way between you and god because god always bless everybody according to where he want you to be if he want you to be in the right and you are left you you will work for so many years to be in that to work that <laughs> so stand in your own like i say couloir for yes you your own path for. yeah Stand in that line. If it's your line, yeah, just stand in that. You have focus to what God is, is want you to do. Mm. Focus in that in the right time. Like I, I will take example with Michael. To be honest, I was so frustrated. How can I not say frustrated? Yeah. Just like, how can this brother? We pray together. We are in a fellowship together. We do this. How you can say thing like this? No. For me, was so I was feeling so bad. And I make, I make, I, I start to avoid him. I don't want, yeah. if he come this way, I go this way. If I come this way, I know if he call me and not pick the call. I was, what, what is this? What is this? And I was, I, I, no, it's not good. Please. <laughs> I, I, I wanted, I run away from him. I said, uh -uh, no, I don't want trouble. Please, I have my own problem with past my age. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you are in the they just do the thing for God. You don't even expect how he come. Amen. Sometimes the person needs to be sometimes near, just near. And until you are in the right place, do what you are doing, God cannot open your eye. Mm. And what we mark, mark for more than one year, we work together more than one year. I was not even thinking, he said he was not even thinking anything. But just be in the right place, do what God wants to do, and be patient. Yeah. Today we are, we are so, we rush. We rush a lot. We have friends, association, uh, now um, a social media show us things. We have some group. Like uh, if you are, are looking for the Christian who are 21 year old, who is doctor, <laughs> myself, I'm doctor. If we can match together and pop, we must put some of the social media. Ah, this is not yeah. God, no. Please, my yeah. people. <laughs> You cannot meet somebody social media say I'm young man I'm doctor I'm live in New York say if I live in Cameroon I live some young lady who live like and I say yes me too I'm here and you make everything we we'll make together you don't even know the person marry somebody you know marry somebody who's your friend know yeah. the person yeah. and if the, the person need to know yeah. God is it the person love God if you want somebody you young lady or young man the person who want to marry love God. The person protects you enough. The person mm. push you to love Jesus and have that character. That means the person really love you. But mm. if the person just made to say in social media, say because you are Latin and me, I'm Cameroon, I need some, no, made together. And the first day you meet, say, give me money. The second day, say, go let us go and do sex. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can I say, oh, please, just run. Run to that place <laughs> and let mm. God choose your own partner. It's the God to choose partner, but the yeah. conviction of our hearts. Be patient. Yes. Awesome. Thank, thank you. Thank you both for sharing. I think as you talk, there's this song that keeps coming to my mind. I don't know if it's Ron Kennelly. Let's thank you. Jesus at the center of it all. Yeah. Jesus at the center. The center yeah. Of the yeah, I think it keeps it keeps coming to my mind. Uh, yeah. but there's something, uh, I think I've seen I've seen some really good Christian. I, I think there's actually a missionary who was in Cameroon. She met her husband online. But they got mm -hmm. to know. So I, I think there are times when God can walk in ways that are out of the norm, but mm -hmm. they didn't get married immediately. They met online. Yeah. They, they mm -hmm. got to know each other. Each other, exactly. Yeah, so exactly. I think that's the key. Don't marry a stranger. Marry yeah. someone you know. It's, it's, exactly. It's, it's good. If it's safe, it's online. You both know it. You don't know, you know, you know somebody online. Online, yeah. everything is fake. Not the person. <laughs> yeah, everything is fake. It could be fake. It yes. can be, yeah, it can be fake. Because it can, I, I, I can put myself, myself say, a young lady who is pastor, very quiet, you know, a post nice picture, but I'm a devil. You know, yeah. it, you know mm -hmm. it's good to know the person and who is the leader of that person. Who speak over that life you want to get married? Does he obey to your own leader? 
just save your own to break. You have, do you have somebody to speak to your life? Please, brother or sister, no marry somebody who have leadership. I want to know the person and know who speak to the life of that person who wants to marry. It's a matter a lot. And when you they, 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 if you, are, you have leader, when you say wait, wait. When you say no, it's not time. Be patient because they see <laughs> rather than us and they can lead yeah. us, they can guide us. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll add to that to the leadership because we have people who, who are in different contexts who watch this, different parts of the world where we understand, they'll be like, leader, what does that mean? As anybody in like, if you, you need to have someone in your life that speaks truth to you, someone that you listen to, hmm. that will give you counsel, maybe yeah, if yeah. you're going off track, one person, there should be one person in your life that you will listen to their counsel, hmm. you know that they will speak truth to you no matter what. Yes, I think yes. that is so important. Even for a woman who wants to get mar married, I think most women want to be sure that there is someone in your life that you respect enough mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that if something happens, I can talk to them and then they will be like, oh, okay, when they talk to you, you're going to come back. I think that's generally a safety, mm -hmm. a safeguard. Um, uh, yeah, okay. I was going to, when you talked about that, it makes me think about when I had asked Blanche to marry me, actually her spiritual mother called me <laughs> and talked to me at a long time. <laughs> Just to make sure everything that it was, yeah, I'm yes, yes. Um, yeah. I'm not going to I'm not going to I'm not going to sweat. I'm not going to sweat. I said she asked the tough questions that Blanche would not have thought of. Yes, yeah, exactly. She, uh, yeah, she sure did. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that that's just important. It's at least, I think it's for protection, actually, to just yeah. have those people in our lives that, mm -hmm. yeah. So now let's go to any counsel for, for married people that will help them have a marriage that is healthy, fruitful, uh, flourishing, like you guys are, what, like what you guys have. Um, as you mentioned before, we're, we are different from different nations. I'm American, she's Cameroonian, different languages she speaks french my native language is english and different cultures uh, oh, definitely different character yes <laughs> <laughs> she's outspoken i'm not but um the key like with any relationship is communication and when you're from a different culture a different um country different language it can be um it can be challenging yeah so we for us it requires a lot of patience but sometimes i don't have me admit sometimes i don't have but um she loves me anyway <laughs> and i think that the main thing though even through all that the is that we even when we were just a couple we weren't married we we're just friends. Um, we said that the God was going to be the center of our relationship. So uh, we pray together at home, and we study the word together. We don't. I don't do it as much as I wish I sh I should, but we do study the word together. We both love the Lord, and when we we determined that God is going to be the center of our marriage, no matter what, they're going to be the center of our marriage. Even if we disagree, if we disagree even strongly, we know that uh, God put us together and she's my blessing. And no matter what goes on each day, if I get on her nerves or she gets on mine, she's still my blessing. And I, I love her. And, the word says, be angry, but do not sin and don't let the sun go down on your, your anger. And this is one thing I love about her. If, if, she, not, if she doesn't like something or something uh, that I'm doing that uh, doesn't please her, she'll let me know. She doesn't like keep it, hold it, and then wait like a month later and say, hey, on March the 4th, you, in 2022, <laughs> you said this to me. Like, I didn't even know I hurt your feelings. So that's you know honest, open, honest communication and understanding yeah. and patience. And patience is what I think would be and definitely uh, 
the Lord being the center of your relationship of your home. And that even goes even when the if there's their children, small children in the house to they make sure that he is the center of your home and yeah. uh, his parents be an example for them. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Raj, you have something to add? Uh, I think Michael says everything. What okay. I would say as like a um sometimes like in the couple to make the couple healthy healthy to be good. It's a communication, mm -hmm. but learn the language of everyone. When it's a language, it's not French or English, you know, language. it can be love language. Um, like communication is to speak the way another person can understand what you say. Mm, yes, communication is not what you think you say. Do you show mm -hmm. another person who listen exactly what you want, how to listen? Because sometimes it's deep, it's, it's sometimes it's difficult. difficult. Don't yeah. come here the way you want your partner need to listen. And mm -hmm. sometimes people stick together and have like a, like I used to say, like a checkup. We used to do our own checkup. Let us mm -hmm. sit. So sometimes I said, let us just sit and speak. What again? I said, let us just speak. <laughs> yeah. Because when a woman said, let us talk, it's like, oh, what did I do? Yeah. Michael right. said, what, yeah. what again? I said, just let us sit. And we try to see everything we're supposed to do. It's not sometimes because problem. No, we're supposed to see. We're supposed to do this and this and this. We're not doing it where we are now. What do you think we can do? You know, it, it helps us to have the same direction. It helps us to have the same vision. Yeah. You know, and, and sometimes also like a couple, it's not every time we do it. We will have some, our our personal, like a house group. House group, yes. Uh, it's very important. When we... Michael like to pray alone. Myself, I have my moment to pray alone. I mean, take my baby alone. But sometimes we need to come together like a couple, pray together, pray together and all the the boss man minister to your wife because it's the first. Yes. <laughs> my minister is the, the pastor, is the leader. Minister yes. to your wife. And sometimes we come together, we talk together. What's the purpose? What do you we want to see about like a couple, like a family, like a, the, the plan of God? We speak about all that. Sometimes we have some. Like a little uh, blood blood. we take, yeah, and it, it guides us. Sometimes we have some misunderstanding. Oh, somebody think this one, somebody think this one. But sometimes when it happens like that, I'm the one always talk. Michael not talk. It's very quiet person. This is thing that I like with Michael. It's very quiet. I think he think more than I speak. Me, I speak before I think. <laughs> God have mercy of me. Then it's very quiet, you know, speak. When it's, we, you speak, you say you're angry, you say, hey, I love you too. And when he said, I just break, and I, I don't know what to say again, say, ah, I beg. <laughs> and it's very, also very quick to say, forgive me. This is the thing I noticed. It's very, very quick. You know, in life, it's not because it's a husband. It's not because you are the one who's um, authority of the house, you know. Macaulay had to say, for, he can say, forgive me hundred times, you know, you know. Me, I would think when well, today I want to say forgive me, I would think like this. My <laughs> mind would turn, my heart would turn. And when he said forgive me, just break everything. I don't know how to say. I said, I can't. <laughs> and it's very quick to uh, ask forgiveness. And sometimes you say, oh, let us put God in the middle. We don't want to know who is right, who is not right. Let us put Jesus. Christ so because of Jesus, we forget everything. After I say no, but let us first speak about. Then we ask for forgiveness. Each another, we say, "Why this will happen?" A, a lot. We ask forgiveness. He asks me forgiveness. I ask him, and we pray. He pray for me. Say, please, God, give blank the heart of patience. Or he, he hold my hand and he pray for himself. Say, please, give me heart for understand my wife. And this thing we used to do, we used to do uh, uh, time to time, and we really help us. Mm -hmm. They attend Marco for that idea because every time when we know understand each another, he just hold me. So let us pray. We leave the house. We can go somewhere in the park. We sit there and we pray. I said, no, if we pray without speaking, you hurt me. Let us speak. <laughs> With every bit of release itself, then he hold me. We praise and worship. We pray. And we return back home. We are, we have peace. Mm -hmm. to, we put God first. No matter who's right or not right, it's no matter. Here is Jesus. 
and um, thank God for that. I say again, thank yeah. you, thank yeah. you for my husband. <laughs> yes, man, that. thank you guys. This is yeah. so much wisdom, so much richness yeah. that you're sharing, and hopefully, couples who are out there, it's inspiring you. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's just so much. Thank you guys. I wanted thank to you. add, um, be at the end of each year, we spend some time in fasting and praying to ask God for direction for the, the next year. So we have a family, a family vision for mm. God wants to lead us into the next year. Oh wow. And we can have some some and this is something she pushed me to do. Thank God. So yeah, so it helps it help us mm -hmm. have a vision for the next year, what he wants us to do to keep our, oh. our marriage focused, our our marriage focused on his will. Mm -hmm. because we want to do his yeah. will and that is so good so you're not planning your year based on oh this is what i would like to do it's like god what do you want us to do yeah. and that that really changes the perspective that shapes a, a lot thank you guys for man those who are watching i want to hear your feedback how do you plan your how how is your marriage going how do you uh plan how do you make decisions are there some things that they have shared that is inspiring you that you're like oh i do this too i would like to do this uh, let us know in the comments. I think they would like to hear your feedback. So we are wrapping up. Any last comments? Any last feedback? Anything you had that you wanted to say? Like, you're, oh, I've not said this. I would like to say. You have anything? Yes. What I want to say is um, we need to careful a lot. We wife, you know, when you married some somebody like a, uh, my husband who is today calm, my wife is a half military backgrounds, very calm people, person because of all the training as commander, you know, like me to call it commander, it's my commander. <laughs> uh, uh, it's very, very, very calm person. It's not speak too much. And sometimes because we were, so, people will speak a lot. We know, we, we think we know more. We think mm. we need to take, like on the planet, the van, we need to, to go, take, let us take do control this. control of things. Exactly. And sometimes we think we are more spiritual. Hey, we need to, Sometimes calm down. It's not because somebody does not speak. It's not because you 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 have that uh quick uh like I cannot say discernment. You, you do things, you know, call, call you're more you're more extroverted. Is that it? Extrovert. Yeah. Yeah. Outgoing, yeah. 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 We just talked, we talked about that earlier today. Yeah, yeah she's you outgoing. Know, I'm I'm not as outgoing as she is. I'm you know, because so maybe sorry. I I'm growing in that mission. It's in the family will speak about mission. I want to do this, I want to do that. I, I want to do, I want to do. And you think because you know have that language or you know speak like that, it cannot do it. No, we need to be very mm -hmm. careful. It's still the the leader of the house, it's still the leader of the family, is the one to decide. What what to do, how to do it with your good intention, with your all your spirituality, you need to be submit and wait for the okay for the chief of the house. It's matter a lot. This is the mistake sometimes we do. It matter a lot. Leave God be the owner. And for we young people who get in marriage, just follow your vision. Love God flow with the Holy Spirit and the right time you will put together whatever no man cannot put together and you rejoice your life. Amen. I think it's the little thing we can. Amen. Amen. Um, so Pastor Mike, any last words? I just want to thank you again for the opportunity to share our testimony and hopefully whoever listens to this video, it'll, it'll be a blessing to you and I would also say if any comments that you, any questions for us just put it in like Pastor Valma says in the the comments of this video and we'll be happy to answer those for you awesome man thank you guys so much I'm really grateful I was blessed uh, just listening to you guys uh, so I know that our audience is blessed as they watch this and so guys, like this video, subscribe, share it. But I'd like you to just say a quick prayer before you leave. Uh, I'm going to ask Mike, since you're the head of the home, would you pray for us and pray for our audience before we head out? Heavenly Father, just want to thank you for this time. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to share 
our testimony, Lord. Lord, just ask you to speak to whoever watches this in their only if they're a special way, dear Lord. We're all different. Father, you know what it is that they're looking for, what they're seeking, Lord. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, just speak to their hearts for any anything that we may have said or Pastor Virabon may have said during this time together, Lord. As you, Father, continue to bless her ministry, uh, bless, continue to bless uh, this uh, outreach that she's doing to touch other people. Father, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Pastor.